Hello and welcome in this session of your course, Pedagogy of Science. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh, your course instructor for the course. And as we are talking about different content come methodologies, today we are going to deal a very important topic of secondary level that is laws of motion. You know, you learners at elementary level have already studied about motion. They know how things move. What are the factors responsible for movement and displacement from one place to another place? What is the role of force? All these things they already know. But at secondary level, you not only need to introduce the laws of motion, but also you need to give them an opportunity to derive their equations and to do some mathematical calculations also. So what your learners already know, first you need to understand. Your learners already know what is motion. How is it related with the displacement of an object or person? They must have learned about the speed as a measure of rate of motion. They may have the exposure and understanding of the concept of velocity and difference between speed and velocity. As a physics student, they should understand that though the speed and velocity both are measuring the displacement in a particular unit time, but velocity is different from the speed because velocity has direction also. Then learners have already been exposed to the concept of acceleration which is basically a measure of change in the velocity with time. Now, how you can start your class or how you can engage your learners? Because this your learners already know. My suggestion would be that give them a worksheet where should be some examples from the real life situation in which they need to identify the concepts that where the motion is being discussed, where the speed is being discussed, where the velocity is being discussed or where the acceleration is being discussed. Or you can develop a crossword puzzle where you can ask the students to find out the units, symbols and relationship between different concepts like motion, speed, velocity, acceleration. Or you can design some small group activities also for the observation purpose. And let learners think that why those changes are being takes place. If the learners are observing same activity, suppose a car is moving from one place to another place and you are showing a video, then what learners are observing? Whatever learners are observing, whether there is any fixed pattern or common attribute which most of the learners have observed in an example or Learners have observed some common things in different examples or different activities which you have presented there. Because when they will do it only then they will be able to inference that what concept you are going to explain. You can give them a picture worksheet also where you can show different situations like two kids are pushing a box, or any kid is kicking a football or someone is opening a door and even you can organize a group activity in the sports field that you give them a rope and let two teams of the student try to pull the rope in opposite direction. Why such activities are required? Why these worksheets are required? Why the demonstrations are required? Because you need to introduce the concept but for that your student need to identify the questions for which they need answers. For example, when you will show them the activities or you will involve them in activities like pushing a box, kicking a ball, opening the door or pulling the rope, the question may arise there that how force work for the displacement of an object. If something is moving, whether it moves with a particular speed, whether the speed remains same. Suppose a person starts from home to the office, whether the speed of the car remains same, no, it gets changes. Sometimes 
स्टूडेंट नो दैट वी एक्सिलरेट द स्पीड सो वट इज दिस एक्सिलरेशन ऑफ अ स्पीड वट डज बी मीन बाई एक्सिलरेशन वट इज एन एवरेज स्पीड वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन इनिशियल वेलासिटी एंड फाइनल वेलासिटी सो दीज आर फ्यू क्वेश्चन विच यू नीड नॉट टू आस्क डायरेक्टली टू योर स्टूडेंट्स रादर वाइल एक्सपीरियंसिंग एंड पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन डिफरेंट एक्टिविटीज सच क्वेश्चन शुड इमर्ज इन द माइंड ऑफ योर स्टूडेंट्स एंड लेट दम आस्क फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर स्टार्टिंग विद द फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ मोशन एक्चुअली वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द लॉज ऑफ मोशन देर इज ए कॉमन नोशन दैट ऑल लॉज ऑफ मोशन आर नोन एज न्यूटन्स लॉ ऑफ मोशन बट डू यू थिंक दैट बिफोर न्यूटन ऑल्सो समन हैज टॉक्ड अबाउट लॉज ऑफ मोशन डू द लर्नर्स नो वॉट वॉज द रोल ऑफ गेलीलियो वॉट वॉज द इनिशियल आइडियाज ऑफ गेलीलियो विच न्यूटन फर्दर एक्सप्लेन एंड एनहांस्ड देर इज ए वेरी फेमस एक्सपेरिमेंट ऑफ गेलीलियो दैट वाइल स्टडिंग अबाउट द मोशन ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट ऑन एन इंक्लाइन प्लेन he observed that when the object move with a constant speed no force act on it he also observed that when a marvel rolls down at an inclined plane its velocity get increases rather he experimented with two inclined planes also that when one ball is coming from one inclined plane it goes to the same height on the another inclined plane and it keep on working until or unless we do not exert any external force and what he suggested from his observations that an unbalance or external force is required to change the motion of a marvel of a moving object but no net force is needed to sustain the uniform motion of the marvel so these ideas were basically later used by newton if you are going to introduce the concept of newton's law the first law of motion there are many activities which have been suggested in different science textbooks and since workbooks also you must have done some activities also engage in those activities to your students you can take a plastic cup a playing card or a hard card sheet and a coin put the playing card at the top of the plastic cup put the coin at the top of the card and ask learners to flick the card flick the card suddenly flick the card let learners do it and note the observation you can ask them to repeat the same activity by using different coins a coin may be of 1 rupee the coin may be of 5 rupee the coin may be of 10 rupees now ask them that if coin is not moving with the card and coin is falling in the glass why is it happening similarly there is a very good activity which most of the students have observed at home when some work is going on at their home or in the neighborhood area you can demonstrate it in the class also that if there is a hammer with a wooden handle and the handle is loose in the hammer the person who is using the hammer what he or she does he or she basically bang the bottom of the handle against a hard surface and the head get tightened onto the wooden handle why is it happening so when you will do these activities you will be able to explain the newton's first law of motion which suggests that an object remains in a state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change the state by an applied force in other words we can say that all objects resist a change in their state of motion this is also known as law of inertia you can use the example of the driving in a car that if someone is driving in the car and suddenly something comes in front of the car and the driver applied the brake suddenly what happened the person who is driving or sitting in the car come in front and sometime it get hurts that's why why what is the role of seat belt because seat belt get tightened you with the seat so your body doesn't move with the same speed 
Now what this law of inertia is saying, if you want to explain this concept, there are many examples which you can use. Like when I have shown you that why are we asked to wear seat belts in the car? When we shake any tree vigorously, that why fruits and flowers fall down? The answer is law of inertia. Here you introduce the law of inertia, which is saying that inertia is a property of a body due to which it resists the change in its state of rest. If there is greater the inertia of a body, greater will be the force. Similarly, if a body has more mass, it has more inertia. So in this way, you can introduce the concept of first law of motion. Similarly, if you need to introduce the concept of second law of motion, how can you introduce it? You ask the students that how they or their parents change the speed of a moving car or sometime they may have observed that in the game of table tennis, this example has been given in the NCRT textbook also, that if in a game of table tennis, a small ball hits to a player, it doesn't hurt. But in a cricket match, if a fast moving ball hits to any spectator or any fielder, it gets hurt. If you need to fix a nail into a board, if you are having a brick or a stone or you are having a hammer with which you can fix the nail easily with the stone or brick or with the hammer because impact is required. Impact is there when ball is hitting whether it is table tennis ball or cricket ball. So what is the difference between these different impacts? The impact produced by the object basically depend upon two things, their mass and their velocity. So, if we use such examples, we can easily introduce the second law of motion and when you talk about the second law of motion, you basically talk about a characteristic called momentum. This was also introduced by Newton. And Newton defined it as a product of mass and velocity. So P equal to mv. So was Newton said, Newton said that every moving object possesses momentum. And the direction of the momentum is same as that of the velocity. And he has given the unit of momentum as kilogram meter per second. Because kilogram is a unit of mass and meter per second is a unit of velocity. So the SI unit of momentum is kilogram meter per second. How can you explain it further? Learners must have observed somewhere, if not all, then few, that if sometimes a battery is dead in a car and car is not getting started, some people are invited and they push it. When they push it, how car get started? If one person is pushing the car, if two people are pushing the car, or more people are pushing the car, when are the chances of the car to be started more? Why a single push doesn't work? Why the push is required continuously for few seconds? And if more people push the car, what get changed? You ask them, let them explore, let them think. You can use image, you can use pictures, you can use a video of such situation or you can ask the students to uh, narrate their experiences because they have seen such incidences in their life. So here you need to explain that not only the magnitude of the force but also the time in which the force has been applied is very important to maintain the acceleration and if car will get minimum acceleration to get started, it will get started. So to generate that minimum acceleration, we apply not only the force with more magnitude means more people are involved, but also the time is required so that the acceleration can be generated. Now ask the students to deduct the formula. You ask the learners to consider a body of mass m. For example, car is having an initial velocity u. Then what will be the momentum? Initial momentum, we can write it p1. p1 will be mu. m is the mass, u is the initial velocity. Similarly, when a constant force is applied to accelerate, there is a final momentum, p2, where mass remains same but v change is the velocity changes after acceleration. So V and the change in the momentum in the time T, how much time has taken from mu to mb is P2 minus P1. So we can write the rate of the change of momentum is P2 minus P1 over T, 
where p2 minus p1 is the change in the momentum in time t. Now according to the Newton second law of motion, the applied force is directly proportional to this p2 minus p1 over t. p2 minus p1 is the change in momentum and t is the time. And when this directly proportional was replaced with a constant, a constant k has been introduced which is a constant of proportionality. Now, what is p2 mb? What is p1 mu? If we replace p2 and p1 with mb and mu in this equation, what we will get? We will get an equation f equal to km b minus u over t. Now, what is b minus u over t? Your students will immediately catch it because they know what is acceleration. So, they know that v minus u over t means the final velocity minus initial velocity over time is acceleration a. So, when they replace this, they will get the equation f equal to kma. Now, if the unit of the force is so chosen that the value of constant k become 1, then you can define one unit of force as that one unit of force is defined as the amount that produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square in an object of 1 kilogram mass. So, 1 unit of force equal to k into 1 kilogram into 1 meter per second square and thus the value of k become 1 and the formula become f equal to ma. So, the unit of the force is kilogram meter per second square which is known as Newton in the honor of Newton, the unit of force kilogram meter per second square was renamed as Newton and its symbol became N. So, in this way you can help your students to deduce the formula. Now, what you need to have in your mind? When you are deducing the formula, you need not to work on blackboard. You ask questions your students what will be here, what will be here, let them write on their own. You just have a, in, keep on inquiring that whether whatever they are writing, they are writing correct or not. You can utilize the services of two or three students, let them come on the board and let them write what their uh, peers are telling. In this way, you will engage the learners even in deducing the formula. Because this second law of motion is very important. It basically a method to measure the force acting on an object as a product of its mass and acceleration. You can link it even with the regular observation of your learners like why does a fielder pull the hand back while catching a fast moving cricket ball? Why there is a cushioned bat or sand bat in a high jump on which the athlete fall? Let them explore, let them explain. Similarly, you can introduce the third law of motion. When you are going to introduce the concept of third law of motion, you can start in your class with the balls. Like why does they bounce back? When someone jumps from a stool or sometimes from a table of the same height, the moment someone jumps in front, the table or a stool fall in the opposite direction. Or there is a very famous example, then when a shooter shoots with a gun, he or she feels an opposite force. So you may ask learners to give such examples where they have felt the same and then you can introduce the third law of motion which is saying that in every action there is equal and opposite reaction. So the action and reaction are two different forces. They act on two different bodies. If the force act on the same body then the balance force occur which will be zero and it will not move. There are three significant features of the Newton's third law of motion which you need to understand and which you need to explain. One cannot say that which force is action or which force is reaction because they are interchangeable. There are two opposite forces. One is reaction, one is action. You cannot say which is action, which is reaction. Because in one situation, one can be action and in another situation, another can be action and action become reaction. Second important thing that action and reaction forces always act on different bodies. They do not act on same body. And these forces are simultaneous means get generated at the same time. So I think that if you use these methods, if you help your learners to accommodate their experiences, 
to accumulate their experiences and use it in explaining the laws of motion. If you ask your students to share their daily life experiences and explain those experiences related to motion by applying any law of motion, you can give them numericals, you can give them certain situations and you can ask that which law of motion is applying here. You will be able to explain these concepts very easily to your learners. So I hope that this discussion will help you in explaining the laws of motion to your students in your class. Thank you very much.